look at this town. This is Manila, before the Japs took it. These people are friends. You'll be meeting them, or people like them, soon. Take a good look at this town. This is Manila, before the Japs took it. These people are friends. You'll be meeting them, or people like them, soon. This is the Philippines in 1940. A modern, civilized country. A piece of America, peopled with fellow Americans. This is the Philippines, December 26, 1941, the day after Christmas. Jap bombers are coming. They're coming in spite of the fact that Manila was declared an open city to spare it from destruction. We didn't know then, as we know now, how little the Japanese respected international law. An open city? Open for Mitsubishis and Zeros. Open for fire. Destruction, death. This was Manila's punishment for flying the American flag, for being an American city. These scenes were taken by Japanese cameramen and captured by us. Here you see them on their triumphal march toward Manila. Where they found opposition, they destroyed it. destroyed without opposition. Christmas 1941. Goodwill toward men. Finally, they marched through Manila. Manila, the whole Philippines was theirs. Or was it? Not quite. Not for five months yet. Not for two bloody battlefields. Not for Bataan and Corregidor. This is Corregidor, the rock. The rock in the gears of the Japanese war machine. The Japs are bombing us from outside. Look at those lamps sway. And still they kept coming. Here is more captured Jap film, the last of it. This is five months later as the little men closed in on Corregidor Fortress. The survivors were starving, wounded, short of medicine. They blasted us, burned us out until we surrendered. This is what was left of us, prisoners of war. No, prisoners of the Japs, there's a difference. Name, Jonathan M. Wainwright. Rank, Lieutenant General. Serial number, 02131. This is the start of the brutal death march. Many of these American and Filipino fighters were tortured and murdered. May 5th, 1942, a tragic day for us. We lost the Philippines. A tragic day for the Filipinos. They lost their freedom. But it was a great day for Hirohito, for Tojo, his head man. Whatever became of him? 
and for the Japanese soldiers. Look at this map. This is how the Jap topside saw it in 1941, right after Pearl Harbor. Vast, incredibly rich, the key to their push southward through the Pacific. The Jap stepping stone to New Guinea, Borneo, the Celebes, Java, Australia. Yes, even to our own west coast. They had to have it. Here's a $64 question. How many islands in the Philippines? The Japs knew the answer. 7,000. 7,000 islands. 7,000 stakes to the richest treasures in the South Pacific. Philippine chromite, the largest deposit in the world. Basis for chromium, stainless steel, and steel forgings. Gold. Iron. Coal, copper, oil. Most important of all, a population of 17 million. Slave labor for the Jap war machine. These are some of the reasons why they wanted the Philippines. OK, you're heading back. Let's have a briefing. Let's take another look at the map. Philippines, 7,000 islands, 7,000 steps nearer Japan. 35 P-38 miles to Jap-held Borneo. 515 Liberator miles to Jap-held Indochina. 405 Flying Fort miles to Jap-held Hong Kong. 65 B-25 miles to Jap-held Formosa. 1,800 Super Bomber miles to Tokyo. That's how our top side sees it. A population of 17 million. 17 million people who trusted our friendship, fellow Americans. We promised them their independence for July 4th, 1946. We've pledged ourselves to go in and see that they get it on that date, or even sooner. 17 million people, 7,000 islands. Yeah, the Philippines are one hell of a big place. It's a good idea for you to know something about this country and the people that live in it. Let's go back 400 years to 1521. That's the year Magellan sailed into this place on his way around the world. He landed on the island of Samar in the middle of the group. The Philippines got their name from Magellan's boss, Spanish King Philip, the great-grandson of Ferdinand and Isabella who financed Columbus. Incidentally, Magellan made the mistake about a month later of leading an invasion. He got into a scrap with some of the natives. His round-the-world cruise came to a quick finish here on the island of Mactan. This is Magellan's monument. The Philippine hombres were tough fighters then, and they're still tough. Don't like invaders. Don't like Japs. See this cathedral? And this one? The architecture is Spanish. Here's part of an old Spanish wall. Philippine money. Get the name, peso. That's Spanish, too. You'll find lots of Spain all through the Philippines. Reason? The Spaniards ran the Philippines for three centuries. That brings us right up to 1898. This is where we came in. Admiral Dewey. Fire when ready, Gridley. Battle of Manila. Too bad you can't see this in action. We didn't have a Signal Corps combat camera crew around in those days. Yeah, that's when we came in, the first time. For the past 40 years, 17 million Filipinos shared Uncle Sam with 130 million Americans. They have many universities. Among them, the Great State University of the Philippines. This is the University of Santo Tomas. They've been studying here for more than three centuries.
Silliman University on the island of Negros. No studying here during the occupation. The Japs used the classrooms for army barracks. They learned the three R's American style in high schools, grade schools, everything taught in English. Kindergarten, just like at home. They shared our daily setting ups. School for farming. Filipinos also shared another kind of American school tradition, one of the U.S. Army's oldest and best, our West Point. It's the general. This picture was taken before the war, when he was in command of the military defense of the Philippines. There were some Americans who saw the need for organizing the defense of the Philippines long before the war. Working with the Philippine government, they set out to build a tight, hard army of Philippine regulars. Even long before Pearl Harbor, the Jap menace was there, ambushed behind diplomatic lingo and grins. Maybe you'll get to see the military academy on Luzon. It's modeled after our own West Point, right down to the uniforms and precision drilling of the cadets. The Filipino GIs were trained like us. We shared with them in this, too. There were four of these tough Filipino GIs for every American fighting and dying on Bataan and Corregidor. They've shared the fighting. They'll share the final victory parade. Supreme Court of the Philippines. They shared our long tradition of justice. Those fine, intelligent faces are the faces of civilized men guarding the laws of a civilized nation, dealing in civilized justice, a term that Tokyo criminals don't understand. And here is their House of Congress. The Filipino legislators built their constitution based on ours. They made their laws as we do, by the consent of the governed. Laws for the Filipinos, by the Filipinos. They had a president. When the Japs invaded, he set up a government in exile in Washington to be ready for the day when we would liberate the Philippines and once more bring it into the society of free nations. His name, Manuel Quezon. Quezon did not live to see this moment of liberation. He died in America. But his vice president, Sergio Asmania, is carrying on the same fight. Like Quezon, the second president of the Philippine Commonwealth wants only to see his country and his people living in independence. They are a deeply religious people. 90% of them are Christians. The Philippines is the only Christian nation in the Far East. They've been Christian ever since the Spaniards first got there. Like us, they're a mixture of a lot of races. If you hit a beach like this down south on the island of Mindanao, you'll meet this kind of Filipino citizen, the Moro. The Moros are Mohammedans. They look peaceful here, but they can fight like hell. Their favorite weapon is the bolo, a wicked piece of steel a top sergeant could shave with. They use it on everything, including their enemies. They fought the Spaniards for over 300 years. After 1898, they fought us. Black Jack Pershing battled against them in his captain's bars long before he battled against the fathers of the Nazis at Chateau Thierry and the Argonne. In 1913, they buried the bolo as an instrument of war and took it up as a tool for peace and prosperity. They joined hands with the rest of the peace-loving Filipinos and earned their right to independence. Their biggest town is a place you've been hearing about, Zamboanga, the place where monkeys have no tails. That's one of the monks. See, just a stump of a tail. 
When we get in, the Moros may put on a USO dance for us. It'll be like this. These Moros are a race of Filipinos with a culture and traditions, with manners, with beautiful clothes, and with pride in themselves. They have learned to trust us because we have learned to trust and respect them as fellow Americans. They dance, but they're hard working. You might see a Moro woman husking rice like this. Or you might see this kind of human transportation or this kind of house moving. Or you might see this on Saturday night or this on Monday morning and this every day in the week. A lot of them earn their living out of the sea. Make no mistake, the Moros are not fuzzy wuzzies. The lowlands of Mindanao lie 10 degrees above the equator. Some of you may find yourselves in the jungle mountains or maybe five or six hundred miles north on some of the other islands. Cebu. Mindoro. Or Luzon. Here you'll meet another kind of Filipino citizen, the Negritos. These pint-sized guys are primitive and don't care who knows it. They don't like cities. They don't like clothes. They do like hunting, roast pig, and dancing. You can get them to like GIs by treating them with the respect you'd give a six-footer. And here is another group of Philippine citizens called Igorotes. Don't be fooled by appearances. They're jungle farmers, and let's put it this way. They never got degrees in any engineering school, but look at these rice fields cut out of the sides of a mountain. Maybe this wouldn't be tough to do if you had a flock of bulldozers and tractors, but this is all hand carved. It took them a couple of centuries, but they did it, figured out all the problems, laid in an irrigation system, built steps and paths so they could get around with their water buffaloes for plowing and planting, made the whole thing pay back in rice. And it's beautiful. Have a dance? This one is done with rice stalks. The Igorot women are as much an eyeful as their landscape. Fathers, brothers, and husbands of these women are piled in graves on Bataan, where they rode on the tanks and fell side by side with thousands of our own guys. There are some important things you should know about the Filipino woman. She is treated at all times by her menfolk with the greatest respect. She is devoted to her religion and to her family. You'll find her modest and modern. She listens to the radio, goes to the movies, dances. She understands and appreciates the meaning of a liberated Philippines as well as the men in her family. Yes, you'll find her modern and modest and friendly. Don't mistake her friendliness. Don't get too playful. She's used to being treated with the same respect we give our own women folk back home. You'll find her working taking care of the family, outdoor girls, sophisticated ladies, moral ladies in a harem. These Filipino women live by their Mohammedan religion, live by it strictly. Usually you won't see them outside their homes unless accompanied by their husband or menfolk. Filipino girls wear models you don't see on a pinup. These are called butterfly sleeves. It's the national dress. Soda fountain cuties, blues singers, women in white, jitterbugs. If you're lucky, you'll be invited to the homes of Filipinos. They're great family fellows. 
That's right, so are we. You'll get a chance to meet the folks. You'll also be introduced to a few dishes you probably never found in Mom's icebox. Don't let them throw you. Among others, there's puchero, the corned beef and cabbage of the Philippines, made with chicken and cabbage, string beans, and the sweet cousin of the Idaho potato called kamote. The bread and butter of the Philippines are fish and rice. If you're even luckier and get invited on a picnic, you'll get the best treat of all, suckling pig roasted on an open fire, the Filipino version of a barbecue. It's called lechon. You'll probably be seeing lots of local food emporiums like these. You'll probably also be hungry and curious. This stuff will taste as good as it looks, but you might be buying dysentery. Let the mess sergeant do the buying. Follow all the rules. Don't eat uncooked food, green fruits, or raw vegetables. Don't drink unboiled water. Keep on the ball with your health by not forgetting anything you've learned and by relearning everything you've forgotten. And here's a tip you got to remember. The Japs have been around for a couple of years. They've been spreading propaganda and lies and some other things even more poisonous. Watch your step. Watch your health. Yeah, the great American pastime. In Lausanne or Louisiana, in Mindanao or Minnesota, it's the same old game. Filipinos go for our sports. Softball in homegrown uniforms. Water babies. The ponies. The same cheering crowds. The same also rans. But this little number is strictly Filipino. It's called Sipa meaning kick. That's it, it's tennis without a racket. You keep the ball in the air with your legs. It calls for fast footwork. Maybe you'll get a chance to play it. Boxing out in the open. The juniors take to it like champs. Talking of champs, Here's one you'll remember. Severino Garcia, once world's middleweight champ. A Filipino boy. Another Filipino fight champ was Pancho Villa, former holder of the flyweight crown. Fair play, democracy, are at the bottom of American sports. The Filipinos take to them because they take to us. Do these remind you of home? Look, Joe, don't be surprised if around midday you suddenly find yourself all alone on a street. It's another old Spanish custom, siesta time. Get set for hot weather. We're right around the equator. March to May is generally the hottest time of the year. The heat is usually sticky, sweaty, but don't kid yourself. Siesta or not, these people know how to work and have plenty of big-time jobs to work at. Lumber, big timber, mahogany, hardwoods. The foothills and mountains on the islands are covered with them. The Japs had their eyes slanted on this stuff, saw it in terms of planes and ships long before we stopped thinking they were just dream boys. But millions of feet of good lumber was deliberately destroyed by the Filipinos before the Japs had a chance to grab it. Sugar cane, thousands of acres under cultivation. The Filipino sugar bowl was one of the world's biggest and richest. More than a million men and women kept filling it. It went out by boatloads. Coconuts. The Japanese wanted control of this business too. Know why? Coconut oil makes glycerin. Glycerin makes high explosives. High explosives make supermen. Supermen make war. Rubber. The
Philippines have this white gold growing in their backyards. Tobacco, cutting it, bringing it in. Here in one of the factories, they're rolling the leaf. Perfectos, stogies, maybe rope. But it all adds up to a big time business. And here's the real rope, the McCoy, Manila hemp, grown from the ground up. The most famous and oldest industry in the 7,000 islands. This man slicing the fibers of the abaca plant. Shredding out the long, tough strands. It's dried, then twined. Back in the old Nantucket Clipper days, Yankee traders tied up with manila hemp in ports over the seven seas. War or peace, it's still sailing the seven seas. No other country comes even near producing as much. Factories, machines, workers handling every kind of skilled job, the kind of people that can run their own country, the kind of people that want peace in the Far East, but also the kind of people that started learning a new job on the double, a trigger-squeezing job we taught them while the Japs were landing, the kind of people that went into the hills as guerrillas, and fought the Jap army for two years because they knew what they wanted, knew what they had to do to get it. The kind of people that got into GI issue and trained in American camps. The kind of people that are marching back with you. The kind of people that idolize this American because he stands for everything we promised and are doing for the Philippines. The kind of people that want their children to grow up, as our kids will grow up, in a world without fascist dictators. Yeah, we're coming back to those 7,000 islands, to those 17 million Americans. This isn't just another movie. Take it from me. These people aren't natives. They aren't beggars. They have cities and farms and industries. They have schools and courts and a constitution. They also have pride and patriotism and self-respect. They love freedom. They'll die for it. They have died for it. Don't throw your money around. For two years, the Japs have looted the Philippines, and there's probably very little left in the stores for the 17 millions who live there. Don't get out of line either. For years, the Japs have smeared anti-American propaganda in China, Burma, Malaya, and among the millions of Filipinos. They filled them full of lies about us. Don't give them a chance to broadcast. I told you so. Just one word more. It's a word that covers a lot of ground. It covers 48 states. It covers 7,000 islands. The word is American. The Filipinos are American. Trade them like Americans. And Joe, don't for one day, one hour, one minute, ever forget that last message sent by a GI who saw his starved comrades, Americans and Filipinos, dying around him at Corregidor. What you are about to hear now is a transcript of the radio messages that came out of Fort Mills Corregidor on May 5th. They are not near yet. We are waiting for God only knows what. The white flag is up. Everyone is bawling like a baby. They're piling dead wounded soldiers in our tunnel. Corregidor used to be a nice place. It's haunted now. Get this to my mother. My love to Pa, Joe, 
Sue, Mac, Carrie, Joy, and Paul. Tell Joe, wherever he is, give him hell for us. Joe, you know who he means. Give him hell. Keep giving him hell till we get to Tokyo. Thank you.